Hi, this is Sue Jackson of the Book by Book blog, and I'm here with a Friday Reads. Now, um, you may be wondering where I've been. I haven't recorded a new video in weeks. If you watch my channel, even if you only watch the book videos, I'm sure you've noticed that I also do videos on chronic illness. And I don't normally talk about chronic illness in my book videos, but that's where I've been. Um, going through a really bad period. My chronic illness, which is an immune disorder, suddenly got much, much worse about a month ago. I don't know why. Um, nothing seems to be helping. So I've pretty much been flat on the couch or in bed for the last month. And um, the last couple of weeks have been especially bad. It's actually getting worse instead of better, which is troubling. Um, I am working with my doctor. I have a wonderful specialist in New York. She's been helping me. I tried one treatment this week. I don't think it did all that much. I am sitting up for a few minutes this morning, so that's a little better, but um, I felt a little better on Wednesday and then way worse again Thursday. So Anyway, I don't want to get into the weeds on that. I just wanted to let you know where I've been um, and why I haven't been around as much as usual, not visiting as many other channels either. The other big news here is that it's in the 50s this morning. <laughs> I am actually wearing a long sleeve shirt and a sweatshirt. It is gloriously cool here. I really struggle with the summer heat with my illness. This summer in particular was just horribly, horribly hot and humid, nonstop without any breaks. So I am loving this. <laughs> Fall is finally here. We actually still had the air conditioning on yesterday morning, just 24 hours ago. So this is a huge relief. So I am very glad it's fall, not just for the weather, but also for the reading season, because I love doing um, the RIP challenge every fall. That's Readers Imbibing Peril. Um, it's a challenge that's been around in the blogging world for, this is the 17th year, and I do it every fall. Very simple, um, no signups or anything. You just read darker stuff during the fall, which I love. So I am fully immersed in the fall reading season and the RIP challenge. In print, I've been reading a much anticipated novel from one of my favorite authors and a friend, um, The Witches of Moonshine Manor by Bianca Murray. Um, I am a huge fan of Bianca's. I've um, gotten to know her because she's been a guest at two different booktopias. Um, if you want to know more about Booktopia, I'll include a link down below. She, um, her first book, Hum If You Don't Know the Words, just blew me away. It's one of my favorite books. It is literally in my top 10 of all time. Loved it. Her next book, If You Want to Make God Laugh, was also excellent. This book, The Witches of Moonshine Manor, is a complete departure from those. Those were both dramas set in South Africa, um, some history in there, as they both went back in time a few decades. This book is mainly focused on fun, but in true Bianca fashion, it also hits on some serious issues with a wonderful sense of humor. It's one of the things I like most about Bianca and her books. So The Witches of Moonshine Manor is about a group of octogenarian witches. And as the novel begins, they are in danger of losing the, the manor house and the property where they have lived since they were children. They were all orphans, all taken in by um, an older witch who lived on the property, um, who was the great aunt of, of one of them. And they've all grown up there 
they've aged there, this is their home, and now they're in danger of losing it. So right at the start, there's this scene where literally an angry mob of men come with a, um, instead of pitchforks, they come with a wrecking ball and um, they manage to hold them off for a week or so, but they've got this hard deadline. They have to pay their debts. They have to find the money to save their manor. Um, and there's a whole lot of other things involved there with how they got into this situation in the first place. Um, one of their group is just coming out of prison, so there's a whole story about that. It is, it's fun. It's very funny, as Bianca's books always are, but it's also dealing with things like aging, friendship, um, sisterhood. Um, there's also, besides the older women in the book, there's one young teen girl, I think she's 15, named Persephone, um, who is very into feminism and wants to help the witches. So there's, you know, there's some kind of feminism and fighting the patriarchy in there too. It's, it's a wonderful book. It's been a great book to read during this week that I've been so sick because it's just a complete escape and a whole lot of fun. And of course, it is perfect for the RIP challenge since it involves witches and magic. Um, really enjoying and almost finished with The Witches of Moonshine Manor by Bianca Murray. Since I did not record last week, I did want to um, just quickly share the audiobook that I listened to last week and already finished because it was really great. This was a middle grade novel, The Mysteries of Trash and Treasure, The Secret Letters by Margaret Peterson Haddix. Now, Margaret is one of my favorite middle grade authors. I always enjoy her books. And this one was the first book in a new series of hers. The series name is The Mysteries of Trash and Treasure. And this first book was The Secret Letters. So in this story, there are two, I think they're 12 years old, two kids who are 12 years old. They live in the same town. Their parents each own sort of similar businesses. They're kind of competitors, but in very different ways. So Colin's mom has a streamline your possessions kind of business where she, she's kind of like she, Marie Kondo. She goes in and helps people downsize their possessions, get rid of anything they don't need, um, sort through things. Nevaeh's dad, is known as the Junk King. So he also helps people clean out their homes, but he's a more trash, one person's trash is another person's treasure kind of person. So um, Nevaeh's whole family, all of her siblings are involved with helping her dad. And at 12, this is the first summer that she is also helping her dad. Now, Colin is helping his mom this summer as well. So you've got these two kids, they don't know each other at the beginning, involved in similar things. Cleaning out one house, Colin discovers a shoebox full of old letters. Now he knows his mother would be like, trash it. But Colin, during the summer, is kind of becoming interested in some of this old stuff that they find in houses. And this box of letters in particular really intrigues him. And he begins, he hides them, brings them home, and begins reading them. And they turn out to be letters from one 12-year-old kid to another 12-year-old kid from the 1970s. And these kids were best friends. One of them was away from the summer. And so they wrote to each other. So Collins just got the letters in this one house that the one kid kept all those years ago. He wants to find the other letters. And he and Nevea, even though their parents are rivals and don't like each other, Nevea and Collins secretly team up together. They both get totally engrossed in this story from the 70s of these two kids and the things going on in their lives. 
They want to find the other letters. Um, they want to maybe find these people even. And that's basically the mystery at the heart of this. I really enjoyed this. Now, sometimes Margaret Peterson Haddix gets into a bit of science fiction. Um, this is all real life. Uh, I loved the characters. I loved the setup. She, she's got a lot of historical fiction in there, although it's very hard for me to admit that the 1970s counts as historical fiction, but it does. And she's even got a section at the end to explain some things to today's kids about the 1970s and some of the things that Colin and Nevaeh encountered in those letters. So it's a whole lot of fun. It's a mystery. It's about friendship. Um, it's historical fiction and the whole package just worked great together. I loved it. So that was last week. Um, this week I'm listening to a new audiobook, and of course, both of these fit in with the RIP challenge. I am listening to The Word is Murder by Anthony Horowitz. So I've been wanting to read, I know he's got all these newer, new to me because I haven't read them yet, um, adult mysteries that I haven't read yet. So I've been wanting to read one for a while. And my husband does, I bought my husband one, um, The Magpie Murders, which is up on our shelf upstairs, but I haven't gotten to it yet. So I saw this on audio and I wanted to try it out. Um, Anthony Horowitz, as you probably know, is a pretty famous author. He's written a very popular um, YA, I think it's YA, I don't, it could be middle grade, but a series called the Alex Ryder series about a kid who's a spy. Um, he's, he's a TV writer, a screenwriter. He's done a whole bunch of stuff. He's very well known. So the weird thing about this book, and I had heard this from other people, but I didn't fully grasp what, what he was doing. He himself is one of the main characters in this book. So his real life self is a character in this fictional novel. So that kind of threw me off at first, but I'm getting used to it. The idea is that he's himself, he's a writer. Um, apparently he's um, been the screenwriter for a crime drama, a detective show in the UK for years. Um, I didn't realize that, but apparently that's true. And in this novel, in this fictional world, a retired detective comes up to him. He does some consulting work for the police, but he needs to earn some more money. So he's got this idea that Anthony Horowitz, oh, and I'm saying his name wrong. I've realized listening to the audiobook, he pronounces it Anthony. So sorry about that. Sorry, Anthony. Um, so this retired detective, Hawthorne, approaches Anthony Horowitz and says they had worked together on a TV show. Um, Hawthorne had been a consultant on Anthony's TV show. So he approaches him and says, would you write a book about this case I'm working on? I'm helping the police with a case, current murder, and um, I want you to write a book about me solving the case and we can split the proceeds 50-50. So Horowitz has some misgivings. This Anthony's not sure he really wants to work closely with him for this long, but he, he accepts the offer and they start working together. So the murder that's the center of the book and that Horowitz is writing about as Hawthorne investigates, it's an unusual case about a woman who walked into a funeral home one day pre-planned and pre-paid for her funeral, and then was murdered six hours later. So obviously this seems like there's something going on here. So the police are kind of at a dead end, so they've called Hawthorne in as a consultant. So he and Horowitz are now going around the city, London, um, investigating this, this murder. So there's a parallel here, and apparently Horowitz in real life has written some Sherlock Holmes novels, which I didn't realize. And so this kind of comes off as Hawthorne is like the 
the Sherlock Holmes and Horowitz is like his Watson. So I'm still pretty much at the beginning of this novel, but I'm enjoying it. I'm getting into the rhythm of it now that I, now that I understand the setup. Um, and it's good so far. Um, definitely dark and murderous and, um, and suspenseful. So that's The Word is Murder by Anthony Horowitz. And now that was definitely enough sitting up for me. I am heading back to my couch. Hopefully I'll be able to get this edited and uploaded today. Um, thanks for joining me. I have missed all of you, which is why I did this today. And I want to know what you're reading. Help me out here. I've been kind of isolated. So tell me what you're reading this week and what you're enjoying.